Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are interested in the value of the first derivative of the zeta function evaluated at 0 and at minus 1. We make use of this expression for the zeta function, which is valid when the real part of alpha is greater than minus 2. This expression was previously derived using a special case of the euler maclaurin formula. Zeta of alpha is 1 over alpha minus 1 plus 1 half plus alpha over 12 minus alpha times alpha plus 1 times alpha plus 2 over 6 integral x from 1 to infinity. The third degree Bernoulli polynomial with argument equal to the fractional part of x, x minus the floor of x. The polynomial is divided by x to the power alpha plus 3. This cubic polynomial is the fractional part of x to the power 3 minus 3 over 2 times the square of the fractional part of x plus 1 half times the fractional part of x. Let's differentiate with respect to alpha. We have here the product of four functions of alpha, alpha and alpha plus 1 and alpha plus 2 and the integral. So we get four terms. The derivative of 1 half is 0. The derivative of alpha over 12 is 1 over 12. The derivative of 1 over alpha minus 1 is minus 1 over the square of alpha minus 1. The derivative of any one of these terms is 1. When we differentiate under the integral sign, the derivative of x to the minus alpha minus 3 is minus alpha minus 3, x to the power minus alpha minus 4. If we are interested in the value of the first derivative at 0, we have alpha here, here, and there. These three terms vanish. We are left with minus 1 plus 1 over 12, which is minus 11 over 12. From here, we get 1 third, which is multiplied by the integral. Let's split the integral into integrals from m to n plus 1. m is a positive integer. The fractional part of x is x minus the floor of x. If x is between m and m plus 1, then the floor of x is equal to m. The cubic polynomial becomes x minus m cubed minus 3 over 2x minus m squared plus 1 half x minus m. Expand and divide by x cubed. The antiderivative of 1 over x is log x. When we use the limits of integration, we get log m plus 1 over m. The antiderivative of 1 over x squared is minus 1 over x. We get 1 over m minus 1 over m plus 1. The antiderivative of 1 over x cubed is minus half over x squared. We get 1 half, 1 over m squared, minus 1 over the square of m plus 1. Multiply the brackets and simplify. For instance, we get minus 1 fourth, minus 3 fourth. That's minus 1. It goes away with that one. We still have this 3. These two terms go away. Also these two. 1 over 2m minus 1 over 4m is 1 over 4m. Minus 1 over 2m plus 1 plus 1 over 4m plus 1 is minus 1 over 4m plus 1. If we take the one third inside, we have summation m from 1 to infinity. 1 minus m plus 1 half, log m plus 1 over m, plus 1 over 12, 1 over m minus 1 over m plus 1. We can sum this part. We have a telescopic sum that is equal to 1, multiplied by 1 over 12, and minus 1, minus 11 over 12, minus 1 over 12, that's minus 1. We still need to tackle this sum here. Stop the sum at positive integer big M. Later, we take the limit as big M tends to infinity. When added to itself, M times is M. Write this logarithm as log M plus 1, minus log M. We have minus summation, small m from 1 to big M m plus 1 half log m plus 1 plus summation i use k as an index k from 1 to big m k plus 1 half log k log 1 is 0 so we can start from 2 do a change of summation index k equal to small m plus 1 when k is 2 m is 1 when k is big m small m is big m minus 1 this sum becomes summation small m from 1 to big m minus 1 small m plus 3 over 2 log m plus 1 from this sum here isolate the last term corresponding to small m equal to big M. Now combine these two sums. The sum is log m plus 1. It's multiplied by small m plus 3 over 2 minus small m plus 1 half. That's 1. Summation, small m from 1 to big M minus 1, log small m plus 1. That's the logarithm of the product. We have 2 times 3 times 4 all the way to big M. That's the factorial of M. The first derivative of the zeta function at 0 is minus 1 minus limit as big M tends to infinity of M minus m plus half log m plus 1 plus the logarithm of the factorial of M. We use Sterling's result, the limit, as m tends to infinity, of m factorial divided by the square root of 2 pi m times m to the power m times e to the minus m. This limit is equal to 1. When we take the limit, we can replace this m factorial by this function of m. When we take the logarithm, we get 1 half log 2 bar plus 1 half log m plus m log m minus m. m minus m, that's 0. We can take the constant outside the limit. If we take the minus 1 inside, we have m plus 1 half log m plus 1 minus m plus 1 half log m. We have limit as m tends to infinity, m plus 1 half, log m plus 1 over m, which is log 1 plus 1 over m. We can write this product as a ratio. In the numerator, we have log 1 plus 1 over m. In the denominator, we have 1 over m plus 1 half. As m tends to infinity, the numerator tends to 0, the denominator tends to 0. We can apply L'Hopital's rule. The limit is equal to the limit of the ratio of the first derivatives. Downstairs, we have minus 1 over the square of m plus 1 half. The derivative of the numerator is m over m plus 1 times minus 1 over m squared. As m tends to infinity, this ratio goes to 1. This ratio is m plus 1 half over m all square. It also tends to 1 as m tends to infinity. This limit is equal to 1. Thus, the first derivative of the zeta function evaluated at 0 
is minus one half the natural logarithm of two pi. Now to the derivative at minus one, these terms are zero. We have minus one fourth plus one over 12 plus one over six integral x from one to infinity. The cubic Bernoulli polynomial divided by x squared. Like on the previous page, write this integral as summation over positive integer m of integrals from m to m plus one. The fractional part is x minus the floor. If x is in this range, the floor is equal to m. Expand and divide by x squared. The integral of x is one half x squared. When we use the limits of integration, we get m plus one squared minus m squared. That's two m plus one. When we integrate, this bracket is multiplied by one. The antiderivative one over x is log x. We get log m plus one over m. The antiderivative one over x squared is minus one over x. We get one over m minus one over m plus one. Multiply the brackets and simplify. When we multiply this bracket by one over m and accounting for this minus sign, we get minus m squared minus three over two m minus one half. Before multiplying by one over m plus one, write this bracket as m times the square of m plus one minus one half m plus one squared plus one half m plus one. When we multiply, we get plus m times m plus one minus one half m plus one plus one half. We have cancellations minus three m over two plus m minus m over two. That's minus m. We also have minus one half. This part goes away with that one. The survivors are this bracket times the logarithm minus three m minus three over two. Multiply the summand by one over six. Truncate the sum at big M. When we sum this part, we get one half times one half big M times M plus one plus one fourth times M. For this part, write the logarithm as log M plus one minus log M. Split, we have some small M from one to big M. Log M times M squared over two plus M over two plus one over 12. We have another sum with log m plus one, but here I'm using the index k. So we have log k plus one. It's multiplied by this part. k should be from one to big m. We can start from zero because log zero plus one is zero. I stop here at big m minus one. This is the term when k is equal to big m. In this sum, use the substitution. k plus one is equal to m. Small m is from one to big m. Every k here is replaced by small m minus one. The quadratic polynomial is multiplied by log m. We can combine these two sums. m squared over two plus one over 12. Minus the same thing is zero. M over two minus minus M over two, that's M. The left-hand side is this sum minus this term. Add and subtract the same term with the argument of the logarithm, change it to big M. This part is here. We combine these two terms. The first derivative of the zeta function at minus one is minus one over six minus the limit as big M tends to infinity. We have this sum, this term. Also this part here, which is M squared over four plus M over two. And this part. Let's focus on the limit of this part as big M tends to infinity. Using the Taylor polynomial, we can write log one plus alpha as alpha minus alpha squared over two plus alpha cubed over three times the cube of one plus beta. Beta is between zero and alpha. Or we can write log one plus alpha as alpha minus alpha squared over two plus alpha cubed over three minus alpha to the power four over four times one plus beta bar to the power four. Beta bar is between zero and alpha. Alpha is positive. From here, log one plus alpha is greater than alpha minus alpha squared over two. From there, log one plus alpha is less than alpha minus alpha squared over two plus alpha cubed over three. We apply these two inequalities, replacing alpha by one over big M. We multiply by minus this bracket, reversing the inequalities. Then we add M over two to get to this line here. After expanding and simplifying, these two terms go away. These three terms tend to zero as M tends to infinity. The limit of the upper bound is one fourth minus one half that's minus one over four. We get the exact same limit when we investigate the lower bound. Thus, as M approaches infinity, this quantity here tends to minus one over four. We have a minus sign. Minus one over six plus one over four is one over 12. We still need to deal with this limit. In the limit, we see the sum small m from one to big M, M log M. This may motivate us to investigate the function X log X and apply the euler maclaurin formula to it. This is exactly what we will do. Consider g of x, x log x. The first derivative is log x plus one. The second derivative is one over x. The third derivative is minus one over x squared. If a is one and b is a positive integer greater than or equal to two, the integral x from one to b of x log x is one half integral x from one to b log x dx squared. Using the limits of integration, this term is one half b squared log b. We also get minus one half integral x from one to b x squared times the derivative of log x, which is one over x. So this integrand is x. The antiderivative is one half x squared multiplied by minus one half. That's minus x squared over four. Using the limits of integration, we get minus b squared over four plus one fourth. We know this integral and the derivatives. 
summation over positive integer j from 1 to b, j log j, is given by this function of b, which is 1 fourth minus 1 fourth times b squared plus log b multiplied by this quadratic polynomial in b, b squared over 2 plus b over 2 plus 1 over 12. Note that this is exactly the same quadratic multiplied by the logarithm that we obtained in the expression of the first derivative of the zeta function at minus 1. The magnitude of this part is upper bounded by 1 over 72 times the square root of 3 times the integral x from a to b, the magnitude of the third derivative of the function, that's 1 over x squared. The integral is equal to 1 minus 1 over b, which is upper bounded by 1. This integral has a finite value as b tends to infinity. If we move the terms that depend on b to the left-hand side and take the limit as b tends to infinity, we get a specific finite result, which is 1 fourth minus 1 over 6 integral x from 1 to infinity, b3 of the fractional part of x divided by x squared. We call e to the power of this limit, the glacier Kinklin constant, a, and so this limit here is log a. Its value is 1 over 4 minus 1 over 6 times this integral. The right-hand side here is 1 over 12 minus the first derivative of the zeta function at minus 1. So the first derivative at minus 1 is 1 over 12 minus log a, and log a is given by this limit here. 